Turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, and we're going to pick up with verse 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, you know, in this Bible class we talk a whole lot about uh, the things that are going on here on the earth. We talk a lot about the things in heavenly places, uh, but we don't do a whole lot of conversing on things under the earth. And that's what the main focus of this message is going to be today is things under the earth, the underworld. Uh, and there's two words, one in the Hebrew, back in the Old Testament scriptures, uh, it's called Sheol, uh, that represents hell, back in the Old Testament. And it's uh, actually translated hell 31 times. It's actually translated grave 31 times. And it's translated the pit three times, the word Sheol. And in the New Testament, uh, you've got the corresponding word or the, the synonymous word uh, in the Greek which would be called Hades and it's translated ten times as the word hell and Sheol and Hades are the unseen state or the place in which the soul and the spirit of the dead go between the death and the resurrection of the body. Sheol or Hades neither are representing the final punishment of the wicked. Neither one of them are carrying the idea of the lake of fire. Okay? Uh, nor do they represent the bottomless pit. Neither are they prison neither are they the prison house of the fallen angels. Uh, that would be Tartarus. In other words, get your uh, turning your Bibles to Second Peter chapter two, right? Here. Second Peter chapter two, and look at verse four. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them in the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. The word hell right there is translated from the Greek word Tartarus, okay? And it's a prison house. It's not, it's not like the hell that we'll read about here in just a little bit over in Luke. It's, uh, it's a place where the, the fallen angels of Genesis chapter six that left their first estate according to Jude chapters, uh, Jude verse 6 that left their first estate and took on the form of men and began to, to marry the daughters of men. Okay, these are those fallen angels that he's talking about there and they're imprisoned in Tartarus in the lower parts of the earth until judgment day. He said these are the ones that, that took on the sons of men. Yep. These are the ones that, these are the fallen angels that left their first estate and, and took on the form of men and began to marry the, the, the daughters of men back in Genesis chapter 6. So this happened then after the flood, before the flood. Yeah. That's kind this of happened what before the flood. the flood. No, but I mean when they got wiped out during oh, the yeah, flood, they yeah. were cast there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and, and I'd say this probably. Uh, knowing this, the other angelic beings in heavenly places that, that realize there's a special place for an angel that decides to take on the form of man and leave his first estate and, uh, and corrupt God's plan and purpose, I guess that probably would be something that would cause a, an, an angel to think twice about doing that. Would that be called a deterrent? A deterrent, exactly is what it would be. It would be a, a very strong deterrent. You talk about them getting married, that was... About them what? You're talking about them getting married was the deterrent or them Oh no, them being in that prison. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> it took, it took, sure? Hey, Dwayne, it took me a second. <laughs> but I see what you did they, there. They, them fallen angels went, what have I done? 
that's the truth there. But uh, I'm going to kind of, as we go along here, kind of draw us a little diagram. This is the surface of the earth. Uh, I'm going to say this right here would be the Great Gulf. Now what I'm drawing you right here is in Christ's earthly ministry. What it was like during his ministry when he was here on earth. This would have been paradise. And this would have been hell. And, we'll, and Tartarus, I would say, would be a special chamber down here prison for angels. So it was different than for everyone else. Yeah, see, it's not a place where you, you go and burn. You know, the, the torment that uh, we'll read about here in Luke here shortly, uh, over here, you go, you go and burn. I mean, the torment was so bad the guy just wanted one drop of water on his tongue. You know, one drop of water. That's, that's what he asked for. You know, and he could, and the, the bad thing about it, he could look over here in the paradise and see the Old Testament saints, uh, their soul and spirit resting in Abraham's bosom. You know, that makes that torment even worse, if you ask me. Uh, but let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Now, like I said, this is what it looked like in Christ's earthly ministry. Uh, Ephesians 4, verse 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but he, that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. So we know that the Lord Jesus Christ he descended into the lower parts of the earth for three days, you know, and he did not see corruption. We know that by the word of God. Also get Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. So we know after spending three days down in the, in the lower parts of the earth, Christ ascended out of there with the keys of hell and death. You know? Uh, and I don't know that that means a literal key. Uh, I want to kind of lean to the fact that maybe it's the key is the Word of God of helping you escape death and hell. Mm -hmm. you, see, you see what I'm talking about? Uh, we know that the, the key to understanding the Bible is 2 Timothy 2.15, correct? Mm -hmm. there, there's keys in this book, but sometimes I don't think that they're just literal keys, you know. Uh, but back in Ephesians chapter 4. Now, I used to think when I would read this, uh, verse 8 again, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended upon high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Uh, he led captivity captive. That's, to me, being captive sounds like a place of punishment to me. Uh, but then the more I thought about it, I thought, well, 
Captive over here doesn't mean they're being punished. It just means they can't get out of here until Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So he actually does, when he dies, goes to the lower parts of the earth for three days and ascends back out and ascends to heaven. He takes and leads this part of hell, this part of the lower parts of the earth, and takes it to the third heaven. Now, how do I know that? Get 2 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> Verse 1. It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth such an one called up to the third heaven. Now we know wherever it was, Paul, now, and there's a lot of discussion on this verse right here and who this man Paul knew was. Well, to me, it's Saul. He knew a man above 14 years ago. In other words, it was, you go back above 14 years, more than 14 years ago, and you've got Paul on the road to Damascus, or Saul. That's the man he knew. And whether in the body or out of the body, he didn't know. All he knows was he was called up to the third heaven. You know? Uh, verse 3. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was called up into paradise. So we know now that paradise, what used to be right here in the underworld, is now up here in the third heaven. Okay? Uh, he says how that he was caught up in the paradise and, uh, and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Now what were those unspeakable words? This right here also nailed it down for me that it was the Apostle Paul. Because what was the unspeakable words that a, that a man could have heard at that point? Gentiles were going to be saved like Jesus. Uncircumcised Gentiles could be saved by believing what Jesus Christ done without the law of Moses. That was unspeakable words at that time. Now there came a time where Paul spoke those words, you know, but they, they constantly kept him in jail. You know, I told somebody one day, I said, you know, when Paul entered a city, Paul was not hunting the choir director to see what kind of music we was going to get together. He looked to where the, the, the local jail was because he figured he'd be spending some time there, you know. Uh, but let's get to uh, Luke uh, chapter 16. Luke 16. Yeah, I had a discussion one night with a with a, a lady. I'm not going to call her a young lady because she's no longer young, and I'm not going to mention her, mention the name. Uh, that was trying to convince me that that hell is not a literal place. That it's <laughs> that it's not literal. Okay, and these are people most of the time that are caught up in this kind of stuff that uh, uh, usually are lost. And they're trying to find a way that they can escape this torment, you know. Uh, but look here, and, and we'll see if it looks like a literal place to you or not. Uh, verse 19 of Luke 16. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, right here, in hell, okay? Uh, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Notice, he's conscious. He's lifted up his eyes. He is very conscious of his surroundings and what's going on here. Uh, 
He lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off. So he could actually look from hell across this great gulf over here to paradise. Okay? Uh, afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he, he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. You know, folks, the Catholic Church and other religions out there would have you to believe when you die as a lost individual, you have a second chance. You have another chance. Well, if, that, if that's true, then Jesus Christ died in vain. You know, they would have you to believe not only is there a paradise section and a hell section and a great gulf and a place called Tartarus, but they would have you believe that there's a place called purgatory. You know, nowhere in this book can you find the word purgatory. It ain't there. You know, it's very unscriptural, the teachings of it is. Uh, the, de the definition of purgatory is a place of pur purification. It's a, it's, it's, it was taught that it was a place where men and women went to purify their souls because they weren't pure enough to go to heaven. Okay? And it was something that churches used to rob people, to take their money. It still goes on today, folks. There's people today that still put stock in that doctrine of purgatory. Now, I've done just a little bit of research on it, and it started somewhere around uh, 600 years after the death of Christ uh, where purgatory began to be taught. Uh, and it's a mean for getting revenue. It, it all boils back down to what, what's it called? The love of money. It's the root to all evil. People will do evil things. They will teach evil doctrines, folks, just to get wealthy. You know? Uh, what's that? Uh, I've preached... I've a few funerals in my day and one of the things from my perspective when I come into a situation especially somebody I don't know right you have a situation where you have family looking to you in that moment for some sort of spiritual hope that their loved one yep didn't go to hell or that they're not gone forever and that exactly. kind of thing and it's hard to well, you can't give them really any hope. All you can do is try to preach the truth, mm -hmm. and, you know. But I think a lot of that stemmed from that that one situation there. You know, unless you've got some sort of foundation mm -hmm. uh, of of a testimony, it's hard. You know, exactly. and a family is looking for answers. And well, and mankind as a whole is looking for some sort of hope. Right. You know? Right. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah, but purgatory, uh, like I said, it's still very, it's a doctrine today that's still very alive. It's, uh, uh, the Catholic Church, we all know, is one of the wealthiest organizations in the world. Uh, you know, I'm not even going to call them a religion, I'm calling them an organization. They're like a big major corpor corporation, you know, that's all about finances, it's all about men and CEOs and stuff getting richer and richer and richer. You know? Uh, it, I'll just be honest with you. Uh, I just ain't got no place in my heart to sit and listen to stuff like that. About purgatory and different things like that. 
I, I thought purgatory was taught in the first century, but maybe I was wrong. I thought Orion actually taught purgatory and, and infant baptism in the first century, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, if you would, get Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And get verse 28. Well, let's get verse 27. And when he went forth to, to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. This is the demon talking. Mm -hmm. He's beseeching the Lord Jesus. They recognize Jesus Christ. They know who he is. They know he's the Son of God. And they're begging him, don't torment me. You know? Uh, read on. What verses I need? What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Verse 28. Most high, I beseech thee, torment me not. Verse 29. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him. And he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Now, if I'm not mistaken, does the word legion, doesn't it mean thousands or something like that? Uh, and he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Now, a, a lot of times you think the deep is something other than what it is also. Well, the deep right here, I looked up the, the Greek for it, and it was spelled A-B-U-S-S-O-S, -S -S, and it means depthless. That is abyss, deep, bottomless pit. They were begging the Lord to not send them to the bottomless pit. You know, that's another section here in the lower parts of the earth. Bottomless pit. <clears throat> now get, uh, if you would, get Revelation chapter 9. sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit now you know here again I'm not plumb sure if this is a literal key here it sounds like it is doesn't it uh, and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So we know that somewhere out here in the future in the tribulation period, there's an angel going to descend down here into the, into the bottomless pit and open it up. And smoke is going to ascend out of the bottomless pit to the, to the point that it darkens the sun and the moon. You know? Uh, great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, I've read behind other preachers on this, this issue right here. And a lot of them want to believe that the scorpions are, are demons. Or demonic spirits. Uh, you know, I'm not plumb sure about that. 
I know this, they have come forth to bring punishment. I do know that whatever they are, it ain't good. Nothing, to me, nothing that comes out of the bottomless pit sounds good, does it, y'all? Uh, <clears throat> and there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. So see, that leads me to believe right there that it's not actually a scorpion. Uh, because the way it says that right there, it says, and their torment was the torment of a scorpion. Right. Uh, when but he struck the man. Just a minute ago, it gave them power as of a scorpion. Exactly Whether right. it had stinger of some exactly. sort. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I agree. And in those days shall men seek death. Notice this. This is a time where it's so terrible upon the face of the earth that people are going to seek death. They want to commit suicide. You know? Uh, and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death, look at this, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men. I mean, think about how God awful that looks. That sound, to me, sounds demonic, you know? Uh, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses run into battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them. Notice, they had a king. These demonic people did. They had a king, and that, and which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, and that's spelled A-B-A-D-D-O-N, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So there's a good bit about the bottomless pit. We've got paradise, which is now in the third heaven. We still have the great gulf down there. We still have uh, hell here where people that die lost, they go to be tormented night and day until they're cast into the lake of fire someday. Uh, we also have the prison for the uh, angels. Uh, and then someday we're going to, Satan will be bound in this bottomless pit. Uh, get Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. So when this guy comes up from the bottomless pit, he's being directed by the great dragon, devil, Satan over here in Revelation 23 while he's up here doing all the stuff we just Well, yeah, about. Satan, I, you know, I'm sure Satan's running the whole show at the time, you know, the great dragon is. Uh, Revelation chapter 20, <clears throat> yeah, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit. So see, we've got a, another angel with the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. 
And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And guess what happens? <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing to me that the, the, the world here has seen a thousand years of peace, okay, where they learn war no more, uh, where the lamb lays down beside the line, and the wolf lays down beside the line, or whatever the case may be, there's peace for a thousand years, you know? Uh, and then Satan's loosed again, out of the bottomless pit, you know? And guess what he's able to do? He's able to go to the four corners of the earth and deceive mankind again. I mean, it's just a never-ending story with that rascal, is it? You know? And uh, he turns the people on the face of the earth against the people of God again. You know, for they're wanting to seek war against uh, the, the kingdom of heaven again. You know, uh, so what does that set in motion? Well, one thing's going to happen at this point. God is going to uh, take the, the, the people of God off the face of the earth, going to remove them, okay? And he's going to burn the earth with fervent heat. We've read about that in 2 Peter, I believe it is, chapter 3. Uh, but he's going to burn the heavens and the earth and create a new heaven and a new earth. You know? The main thing you want to make sure of in this lifetime, though, is that you don't wind up here. Because you don't have a second chance. Your chance is right now. Paul says, I think it's in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 or 4, one of those chapters. Today is the day of your salvation. Get it right in this lifetime, or you won't get it right, you know? And as we read when we started off uh, this study, was that there's coming a time where every knee shall bow before Jesus Christ. Even these people, okay? Uh, even these angels that are in prison. Uh, every knee shall bow before him one day and confess that he is Lord. You know, but does, does that now a lot of people teach that that's universal salvation? That when these individuals do that, when they finally bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ and confess Him Lord, that at that, at that time they had a change of heart. And that was, and that's universal salvation. There are doctrines out there today, folks, that teach that uh, Satan and his angelic beings will even get it right with God. It ain't going to happen, you know. Uh, there is no purgatory. You can't go get your soul purified and then come back. That ain't going to happen. You need to get it right, right now. And in this life, you've got one thing that will save you, and that's to trust that Jesus Christ died for your sin, was buried, and rose again. And I appreciate you, and have a good day. Right there on the right, you see.